So the dog that I use, the gang that I rep, is, um, is Pro Tools. My name is Devon Terrell. Uh, I'm an artist slash engineer slash influencer. I obviously am an artist myself, but I also do a lot of writing for TV and film as well. And then I'm also just an influencer overall, uh, just doing a lot of things with companies, brands, and stuff like that on the teaching side of just audio and stuff like that. So really just anything audio, I'm your guy. I kind of fell into becoming a content creator just by happenstance. With having viral content, it kind of comes with the territory. So it wound up just starting to become a business. And I just have fun doing it, to be honest. I'm really big on doing things that really fulfill me, as opposed to just doing things that, you know, feel like a job. Like I can sit and co create content and do music and stuff for 12 hours. And I'm cool with that, you know what I mean? So I always felt like if there's something in your life that you could sit and 12 hours go by and you're like, oh, I gotta go to sleep. And you're not like, oh my gosh, I'm tired of this. That's probably what you should be doing with your life. I record, mix, master, produce. I do everything, you know, from start to finish with my, my music. Even vid my videos, I shoot those myself too. I just feel like, you know, if I have something in my head, I just know exactly what I want. I guess in that regard, I'm a perfectionist, but at the same time, I know nothing's ever gonna be perfect. So I've also figured out how to get over that hump of, oh, this isn't right, blah, blah. It's like, no, I get it to the best it could be. And of course, I just say, okay, this is, it's, I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? Like nothing's ever gonna be perfect. I think that's what holds a lot of content creators back and artists. That's why a lot of people are like, I do music, but they have nothing out. It's because you probably just can't get over that. I call it the artist syndrome of just like not everything being perfect. It's like, it's never going to be perfect. The podcast is honestly the most important aspect in my audio engineering life right now, um, because I think it's really important. And it kind of makes me emotional because it's really important to me to see three young men of color talking about something educational and for people to laugh and giggle about it. I think that's really powerful for people, for some young kid to see come on his timeline and just see like, wow, like these people are like me, like, and that's okay. And sure, for most people it wouldn't be like, oh, this isn't the coolest thing in the world, but for someone it is. And I think that when people see how much engagement we're getting, how much people are into it and stuff like that, I think that that really is triggering for people in a good way. So the door that I use, the gang that I rep, is um is Pro Tools, uh, and uh, I've been using Pro Tools all my life. Uh, it was a doll that I was introduced to. I've used other dolls, but um, for me personally, as a producer, I really am not a big fan of producing in one doll and then printing the stems and bringing it over into you know Pro Tools and stuff to record. So it kind of forced my workflow to just say I'm just gonna learn this one doll and put everything in it, and I just never have to move. So I don't I don't have the deal with this is the beat session and then this is the vocal session. Like everything is always in one package in one place, and that's why I basically just stick with Pro Tools. Probably Elastic Audio. Like, say for instance, I feel like I have like the perfect take or just the perfect audio file, but I just feel like the timing, I just wanna shift it just a little. That allows me to warp the audio, like in just a, such a minuscule place and just getting it tight on the grid. So I definitely say Elastic Audio is like the greatest feature that probably no one talks about. I find that being an artist, it was really important for me at my time to be able to record, mix myself, only because it was very expensive. A song is a product, right? And in the back of mind, I say to myself, well, what do most companies need to figure out? You need to figure out your assembly line. We source the, the materials from this country or this place, and we figure out how to get to that finished product. So for me, it was like, okay, my finished product is a song. We need a recording engineer, a mixing engineer, a mastering engineer, a producer, a songwriter, all of those things, right? In order for me to get to that finish line. So for me, I said, if I just take the time out to learn these things, then I can have a product that is that gets created for a extremely cheap price, they near free, and now that product that I get to them can be high quality, but my cost, my expenses for that product is nothing. So everything is profit. I was obsessed with music as a kid. Um, it was the one thing that I feel like made me stand out. I wanted to take it serious, but I think the moment where I was like, oh, I wanna learn how to engineer was, I would always 
be uh, waiting for my friend that had a studio in his house and I was beholden to him, you know, whenever he wanted to record and stuff. And I was like, yo, if I just learn how to do this myself, I can record all day myself. So that was a game changer thing for me. And I was like, I'm just gonna learn this. I was like, I don't care. Because then no one, no one's gonna work harder than me is what I felt like when I was a kid. I think that was a real big shift for me in that regard, just being able to do it myself. And that's where I started to learn and really get serious on the tech side of stuff. I think that, you know, you evolve like over time because of the technology that you have at your disposal. Like when I crack open an old session from 2009, I am sick to my stomach. Like I'm like, what were you doing, you know? But I think Dave Pensado said it, I'm sorry if I misquote him, but he basically said if you want to make modern music, you gotta use modern tools. And I always said, and pride myself on, don't be the old grumpy dude that's like, this is the way to do it. It's like, no, there's a million different ways to do it. And I pay attention to the younger generation too. And like, how are you getting from A to B? You know what I mean? Like, how are you doing it? And I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna use that. I don't care how many followers you have. If it's good, it's good.